You probably want more contributors to your project, more stars, or maybe you're getting loads already, but you know, the issues are hard for you to go through because they don't make a lot of sense. Well, this is where issue templates come in and you can actually help people contribute to your project by using issue templates. Let's take a look at bug, for example. If we go to bug here, we can see that we've got some required questions that will really help the maintainers and also help the contributor. For example, have you checked the open and closed issues? Make sure it's not a duplicate. And where did did you find this bug? Was it on your local development or was it what's deployed in the cloud? And what version of the project was used? I think that's really important. And we even say it can be found at the bottom right corner of the project. Therefore, people can find it. You know, you're helping them on how to find it because it is a required field and we do want them to, to submit it. Do you want to work on this issue? And I've done a video dedicated to that as well. But this is really important. It helps everybody involved. And you're not going to get this perfect first time. But when you do find a project that does it and you think, oh, that's a great idea. You can go to the .github directory and then you go to issue templates and let's have a look. So we were looking at the bug template and let's have a look at the bug template. Here we can see what it looks like, but then we can also see how we achieved that. And we did it with a few lines of YAML config because these are, are repeated. I mean, if we hit edit straight away, let's go into edit and you can see it's giving us information and tips on what we can do with this as well down the right hand side. So this is awesome. And they do have some great documentation on it. Like I said, if you find an example online from a, your favorite project, you can actually use the config. I mean, what we've done is we've got a name and this is what's displayed on the issue page. And we've got a description that's also displayed on the issue page when people pick if it's a bug or a feature or something else. The title, like the default title, people can change this, but what's it gonna start with? Any labels that are gonna get assigned straight away. We assign uh, a waiting triage because it triggers a GitHub action. And I've got a whole video dedicated on that as well. And then the body, right? What's going to be in the body of the issue? Well, the first thing is, is the checkbox. I mentioned to you that it is required and it only has one option. You know, I've checked the open and closed uh, issues. That's really important. We probably get half our issues are probably duplicates of ones that have been opened already recently, or maybe they've been closed because they weren't a feature that we, we wanted added to the project. So that really helps the maintainers. And the other thing is you can add a label and description and other inputs are slightly different. You can see with an input type that isn't the checkbox like it was at the top. You can see we've still got label and description and we've got validation. We don't have much more. We've got a text area. Again, it looks very, very similar, but now you'd be given like a, a text area box rather than a single line. We've also got got a drop down that I did show you too. So you've got what options it is, are multiples allowed, and what is the default option? And you can even add comments. For example, here you've got a type markdown and then we can add the value. So at the end of the issue, it says, come and join us in Discord. I mean, this is really powerful. And like I said, you're not gonna get right first time. So add it to your project and get feedback, right? This is open source, this is part of your project. This is in that issue template directory, which is in the .github directory in your project. So it's a great way for people to suggest improvements as well. I mean, they could maybe come up with more labels. For example, we've got goal fix for our bugs. And if we go to the other issue template, for example, feature request, we also have um, a label kind of goal addition. And you might manage your project slightly differently, but this is really important and you're not going to get it right first time. I know a lot of projects, they start getting more and more issues and after time they realize there's a lot of overlap, which sometimes confuses people and reduce it. You will also see that in that directory, we did have a config file. So let's go back to that and just have a quick look issue template, we have a config file. And this one is blank issues enabled are false. So we don't allow blank issues because unfortunately they get overused. And then contact links. So if anyone wants to contact us, we recommend they do check out the FAQs. And if it's not covered, start a GitHub discussion. So therefore all the maintainers will get notified. So here you go, this is the config that I was telling you about. Um, it says question, and if it's not covered by the FAQs, do ask in our GitHub discussions. And this goes straight to the FAQs. And then we've got GitHub discussions at the bottom as well. So this is a great way to kind of tie the deployed app and the GitHub repo together. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I look forward to geeking out with you on the BioDrop project. I'll see you there.